Hey guys, welcome to another Elementor tutorial. Today I will be demonstrating and explaining to you the container widget and the heading widget. We are starting right now. When you edit your page, this is what we see. The site title and the page title. I'm going to remove those and I also don't want a navigator over here, so we're going to close it. The navigator is useful, but not for this tutorial. Go here in your settings and then you go to change the layout to Elementor Canvas. Click on it and here we go. Now our page is beautiful empty. So the first widget we are going to talk about is the container. Just drag and drop it to over there and then we have our container up here. The container is actually a base plate of Lego when you can build anything on it and change the position of it, change the order, change everything on this Lego plate. And the best way to show you how the container works is to actually go and create other widgets within this video and you will see how the container works as we go because it's the best way to work with. However, we are going to change one thing. We are going to make a beautiful background within this container. For that to do, you go to style. As you can see that all widgets have these three tabs in them, layout, style and advanced. And a lot of these options are also all the same with all the widgets. So in the first widget about the header, I'm going to explain all these things, the layouts, the style and the advanced, so that we don't have to do it anymore with other widgets in this video series. All right, but we're going to add a beautiful background. So you go to style, we use the normal background and the type will be classic. For classic, you can choose a color or a image. We're going to use an image of the forest. I already have it here because of my other tutorial about Elementor coming soon pages, but we're going to use this video. We can't see anything of the background. It is because of the size of this container. It's really small. I want it to be full height on the screen for our tutorial today. How do we do that? Well, we just go to layout. Now we go to min height and to achieve full height length, containers use 100 VH. First, we put it on VH, very important, or else it won't work. And then you type in 100. Here we go. Now we have a container, which is the full height of the page. So far for the container, we're gonna see more of the container in the upcoming widgets I will be demonstrating to you. Press on this icon, then you go back to all the widgets there are. The first one we're going to talk about is the heading. Drag and drop the heading into the center of the screen and just let it drop. Add your heading text here. We're going to change the title to Learn Elementor. You might think, why can I not just show the title of my page or post up there? Well, you actually can, but it's this button. If you click on it, it's only for the pro version. Oh, well, we're going to cover that in another video. The link option, you can change a link here. So then you can click on your title, useful in certain areas of your website. The size, I always keep it to default. Why? Because we will change the size within the style tab. I'm gonna show you later on. The HTML tag is really important. H1, H2, H3, it really defines the hierarchy of your page. H1 means this website is about this subject. When you're talking about a different subject, you should go to H2. Within the H1, you have H2. Within the H2, different subtopics like H3, H4, H5. And this is the hierarchy I'm talking about. You can learn all about this in the video I created about SEO, which is really important when creating your content. Right now, we're going to make this H1. And the alignment, you can change it to the center, the right side, or justify it. If you have a lot of text, then it is justified, which looks great. But now we're going to align it in the center. That's it for the content. Let's go to the style tab where we can actually style this widget. So let's click on the color right there. And here we can just change the color to everything we want. Use this one to get different colors to your likings. If you want to reset it, just press on this clear button. I like this, it's a little bit dark blue. Now, one of the important things to do when building websites is to make use of global colors. 
press this plus icon so you can create a new global color. What does it does? Well, it saves this color inside of your website so you can always use it in different widgets. That is very, very useful. And let's call it navy blue. And then we press on create. Now the color has been saved as global. If you now click on this icon, you will see all the global colors that are available within this website. These colors are created by Elementor and these are our custom colors. If you want to change these, just press on the settings icon and then you can just change the colors as you want. You cannot delete them because they are system colors, but you can add custom colors to your likings. All right, let's get back to editing. Now let's go to typography. Click on the pencil. Now there are a lot of fonts inside of Elementor because we have the own system default fonts, but you also have the Google fonts. Let's go with Nunito Google font. I like this font. Here you can change the size of your font. Let's make it a little bit big, like 60 pixels. Whoa, let's make it 60 pixels. And here you can change the weight of your font. You gotta make it 200, 300, 400, well, up to 900. It's like making it bold or default or really light. Let's change this one to 700. So I like the 500 style most. Let's use this one. Oh, by the way, if you're changing the size, you can also use EM, REM or VW. Also make sure to check out your tablet style and your mobile style. This way you can see if my font isn't too big for a mobile screen and you can change it accordingly. Let's say I want to have 18 pixels on my mobile screen, but on my tablet I want to have 150 for example, and on my desktop I want to have 60. It's all possible with an Elementor and it's really easy. Don't forget to, ch to check that out when you're building your pages. Transform is the next one. You can make everything uppercase, lowercase, capitalize it or just make it normal the way you typed. We're gonna keep it on default. The style, here you can change it to normal, italic of oblique. Oblique is just a little bit different from italic and it gives just, just gives you this little smooth difference. Real designers know what I'm talking about. For now, we just use default. And any decoration, of course, we can underline it, we can overline, overline, you can't see overline, because of the position of this thing is way too much up. Let's change it really fast. Go to advanced and you go to your margin. The first thing we need to do is we need to unlink these values or else everything will change. And we only want to add a top margin of 150 pixels like this. Now the margin is the space above. Now I will be explaining more about margin and padding in just a bit, but now we can see that the Overline also works. Go back to style, go back to typography, and we were playing with the overline, right? You can also do line through and just none, but just keep it on default. Now the line height is exactly what it says, it's the height of the line. How you can see it? Well, if we press enter, and now we type in with the W press doctor. If we now go back to typography, and we change the line height, this is what happens. You can change the height between the lines or just push them a little bit closer to each other, which is very nice. Then we can change the letter spacing. This is great. And then we can use word spacing and then you can actually create some space between the words. Really fun effects. So now we have already learned the typography and the text color. Isn't that great? Now, if you want to save the typography to your website to use it later on, you can just press this create new global font. Press this plus icon, and then you can change it to H1 settings, for example, and press create. And now we have also, as with the global colors, we now have global typography. And now when you click on the global fonts, you also have the H1 settings, which you can always use within your website. This is very useful. Normally when you create a website, the first thing you do is adding global colors and then you're adding the global typographies. So everything in your website is consistent. And it don't has to be exactly great or awesome because you can always change it later on. For example, if I want to change 
every color within my navy blue, I just go in here, go to the settings, then I just change this global color to, for example, this color. And when I just then update it, all the widgets that are using this navy blue will be updated everywhere on the website. So this is a really great feature. Understand the power of it and use it for your benefit. Let's get back to our website. All right, you've learned the typography. That's awesome. Text stroke. This is a really fun thing. You know, you can actually create strokes within your widget. As you can see, this is the way it works. You can also change it to 50, for example, and you can create some really great effects with this one. We're not needing it right now, so we're gonna put it on zero. Text shadow. It's also a very fun thing to play with. Let's change the color. Here you can change the opacity of your shadow. So we're gonna make it dark and a little bit like this. And then we're gonna change the blur. Here you can change the, the place of where it is. And you can create really fun stuff because when I do it like this and I change the text color to white, for example, then you have white letters with the shadow background. So this way you can create real cool effects within with shadows. So the blend mode for this to see what's happening, because you can't see anything right now, we have to push it a little bit more down so we can see it within the trees. We go back to advanced and then we go add some margin again, 550, well, let's make it more, 750. Then we go back to style and then I'm gonna change blend mode to multiply. Here you go, screen or overlay. This is really great effect. Darken it, lighten it, color dodge, saturation, or even color difference, exclusion, U, and luminosity. So with this blend mode, you can create really great effects if you're using different elements like dividers or borders or anything like that. Let's keep this on normal. All right, that's the style tab. Let's go to the advanced tab. In advanced, you can change your margin and your padding. We've already done that. If you want to change your margin back, then let's change it to 150. So what is different between margin and pattern? Well, it's very logical. I'm gonna show you just a bit when we're changing the background color. All right, here you can change the width. You can go with full width, inline or custom. Custom is very useful if you want to change it around like this and you're gonna make it smaller. You can align it with this one. And the full width doesn't really work this way because we didn't change the container to full width. So how you can change that? Well, you can just go to the container and then we're gonna change the container width to full width, like this one. Now it is full width, right? If we now go back to our text, you can click over here. I want more width on my screen, like this. And now when you go your width and change it to custom, you can actually see what it does when you change the width. This creates a lot of possibilities when creating most awesome and beautiful designs within Elementor. For now, we're gonna change it back to default and we're gonna change the container back to boxed. Let's get back to our heading, just click on it. So it's aligned on the right side. Why is that? Well, I had the align self. I can put it on flex start, center or flex end. I want it to be in the center, so I can just release it or push it or whatever you want. Later on, you're gonna see within the container that is useful if you have it centered. If you want to see what order does, we have to add another widget. So we go back to the widgets, we're gonna add another heading. You can do it like this to add another one, or I don't want to style it entirely, so I'm gonna right click on it, press delete. And I'm just gonna right click on this one, I'm gonna press duplicate like this. We're gonna change this real quick. I want this to be only with the W press doctor. We're gonna make it a H2. Go to style, we go to typography. I wanna make it smaller and I wanna lose the height on top. And we did it with its forms. Change the margin to zero. Okay, this looks great. Then, then I want the color to be another color. So I go to style, typography. Oh text color, I want it to be navy blue again. And then I want this subtitle to be removed. So I'm gonna change this like this. All right, learn Elementor with the WPress doctor. 
All right, we were playing around with order. Now, if I now press this button, you will see what happens. It just changes the order of the widgets. Now, because we have a 150 pixels over here, you will see all this space. So this is what order does. It's pretty useful if you have a lot of widgets, you can change them upside down. Now, the size is actually a CSS rule which you can apply, grow, shrink, or custom. You can do really great stuff with it, but but with this widget, it's really not that interesting because we have no background colors, we have no borders, we have nothing. So this is not very useful. I'm going to show you it in another widget. With the position, you can do some fun stuff. If you change it to absolute, you can change it to anywhere you want on this page. When you change it over there and you start scrolling, it stays there, right there. So I want to put it on the left side. No problem. When I scroll, it just stays on the left side. When I put it on fixed, you can actually place something permanently on your screen, even when you scroll. So let's put it on the right side. And now when I scroll down, it just stays on the right side. This can be used to create some really cool things like small background uh, patterns or images that you have placed everywhere. And when you scroll, they go behind things and go be in front of them. This is really cool to create something great. All right, we're going to change the position back to default. The next one is the Z index. The Z index is really great. With the Z index, you can actually change the hierarchy of different widgets in front of behind them. Let me demonstrate it. I'm going to give this H1 heading a Z index of 50. It has to be numbers. And then I'm going to the subtitle. I'm going to advanced. I'm going to give it a Z index of 25. And then I'm going to change the margin to slide it behind the other one. Why is it behind? Because of the set index. If I now change the set index to be higher than the H1, remember the other one was 50, so let's make this 75, then we are in front of it. Isn't that great? You are learning CSS. Well done, I'm proud of you. If you like this video till so far, hit that like button so I know we were on the right track. Now let's put it down, reset this margin, and we don't need the Z index, so we're gonna put it on zero. Then we have the CSS ID and the CSS classes. What are those, doctor? Well, the CSS ID and classes are basically just name stacks that you put on the widgets. And with this name tag, you can create custom CSS, and then you can call in this name tag so Elementor knows that this piece of code is about this name tag and it only will change that element, which is very useful in creating websites. We're not going to do that right now, so I'm going to leave it empty. In other videos, you will see when I use this and how I use this and how fun it is. Let's go to motion effects. Well, this is a really fun thing to play around with. If you click on it, you can see different things like fading in, down, zooming, bouncing, sliding, rotating, attention seeking, light speed, and specials. Let's do a special. Ooh. Ah. Whoa. Pretty awesome. You're just blowing me away. Well, this really reminds me of the old PowerPoints. Remember when you were sweaty and creating those beautiful PowerPoints with a lot of effects and then you come to your classroom, you plug your ESB port in and you load it up and then you notice that the teacher has a very old PowerPoint and all your effects are gone. Comment below if you remember those days. Here you can change the animation duration from slow to normal to fast. Any delay in how many seconds it will start. This is a millisecond, so if you want to delay your effect with two seconds, then you have to put in 2000, like this. It's really awesome. All right, let's go to transform. In the CSS transform, you have different kind of options. Rotate, offset, scale, flip horizontal, and flip vertical. What does it does? Well, it is pretty logical. You can rotate it anything you want. And this change is permanent. So when you change it like this, it will stay on this and every visitor on your website will see this. There's also an option for 3D rotate. And now we're going to get really messy with this. Whoa, it looks like a scene of Star Wars right now. And the perspective is also pretty cool. 
if you do it like this, whoa, 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 whoa. So you can change all kind of real cool stuff with all these rotate options, 3D rotate, and well, just reset it. The offset, of course, you can just change it to whatever you want. It's actually the same as we did before with the positioning, but now it is within the transform. And scale it, of course, and you can also discard the pro proportions. So you can actually scale it any type and place you want. You can go completely nuts on this. You can skew it and you can flip it horizontal and vertically. You can choose the anchor point and well, of course, you can do a lot of things. So when do I use this kind of things, of course, to create different kinds of layouts, but also when I hover over it and I have an image, for example, which is actually a clickable image, then I want it to be scaled. So I click on this one and I use a scale of 1.2, for example, when I hover my mouse over it, this is what happens. And these effects are not only fun, but they're also very nice for your visitors to know that it's, for example, clickable. All right, let's keep it. I like it. All right, then we go to background. Click on the background. In the background, you can change, of course, the background of your widget. Let's create a classic and we're going to use a color, which is pretty boring. We're going to use this beautiful elephant. Insert media. Now you can't see the elephant, can't you? Now here comes the margin and padding in place. Remember? Go to a layout. Now you can see the difference because when I add a margin, you all know what happens. It just goes down. But when I add padding, unlink it. I'm going to add 25 padding. You can see that now we can create space inside of the widget. If you want to see the beautiful elephant, you have to put in, for example, 200, 250 pixels on top and 250 pixels on the bottom. And now we can see the elephant as a background of our widget. And of course you can change the position to center it or to top center it or to top left it. As you can see, it is not perfectly aligned the way I want it because I want to see his head. Well, no problem, just go to custom and then you can change the position yourself. Wow, like this. There we are. Background colors, you can change the position. Attachment, you can make it scroll. And by that, I mean this, or you can make it fixed like this. And then you have to change the position back. So now you can be really creative to create blocks within blocks with different kinds of backgrounds and images. So you can go all nuts with these real great options. Repeat, well, you can't see it right now because nothing is there, but when we go to sizing right here and we change this to auto, cover, contain and custom, now you can see the repeat in action. You can actually change how many, uh, how big the image is. And if I put it on repeat, you can see it everywhere. If you go to default, if you go to default, it will still be on repeat because of the size and then put it on no repeat. Now it's actually gone. Oh, there it is. It's because we changed the position. So it is all messed up when we make it smaller. And you can repeat it on the X, like I said, only on the X, like there. Let's change this back for a minute. So now you can see that the width, when you change it, is now repeat on the XS. And now it says we repeat it on the IS. You have to, of course, we have to move this because it's totally out of focus again. Here you go. And the X is like that or just repeat them entirely default or repeat them entirely or just change the side to cover almost always the best option all right we're gonna remove the background and we go back to layout and then i'm gonna remove the padding and the margin again okay and then we go to border. We're almost done. I'm really proud of you if you're still watching because those are a lot of options, but all, but all these options are always the same on the other widgets. So you're actually building a foundation of knowledge to use within building every widget there is within Elementor. Isn't that great? We were working with borders. With borders, you can create the most beautiful things. If I just put in like 15 like now, nothing happens, we guess, because we have to change the border style the border type to solid. And now you can see the actual actual border. Let's make it 50 pixels wide. For example, this is way too big. Let's change it back. 
And now you can see that the padding is also very important because now we can change the padding on all sides and the border has to obey the paddings. Back to border. And you can change the color, of course, to make it red and we can make it double, we can make it dotted, we can make it dashed and we can make it groovy. Now groovy you can't see very well, but when I change it, there is your groovy style. It's a bit different from solid. As you can see it has some more 3D effect to it. This is really old. It really comes from when I was a kid and playing around with HTML and CSS, the border type groove was, wow, this is amazing. It is three dimensional. This looks great. And now we are like, now if you unlink this, you can actually create some real cool designer stuff uh, like this. When you only have, let's make it too solid. Let's make it black. For example, let's change this border also from the other one to make it solid. And for example, on the right side, oh, and on the top, and I don't want this. And then we're also gonna make it black. And let's remove this top one. Now we have also some, oh, you can create some pretty cool effects with all kind of borders and stuff. And I did it wrong because what I wanted to do was the top on five. For example, we're gonna change the border of this one on the top to zero. And then we're gonna change on the bottom to also have it five. For example, well, if you use your creativity, you can create all kind of beautiful shapes within with borders. And this is really fun to use. Let's remove all borders right now. And with the border radius, you can, oh, you can of course change the color. Logical, and with border radius, you can make rounded colors like this. Beautiful. Now, what I also do like about the border options is the box shadow. If you click on it, you can now change the shadow of the box. Of the box, yes, the shadow of the box, like this. Not the shadow on the letters, but on the widget. So now you have shadow on the widget, which you can use to create some really amazing effects on your website. And of course you can make it blurry and you can change the spread and you can change the position to outline or inset. I don't like the inset, I like the outline. Let's make it a little bit smaller, blur it a little bit more. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you can use box shadows and borders to create really fun stuff. Let's delete it and let's get back to mask. The mask is really great if you have uh, images. So I'm gonna show it even more with the images widget because that way you can see it really good and it looks great. When you go to responsive, you can turn things on or off for desktop, tablets, and mobiles. When I hide it on desktop, you will see that it's been, you see these stripes, which is mean it's not viewable for desktops in the live version, but it is for tablets and mobiles. This is very useful if you want to create something else for mobiles, for example, an image, which is way too big, doesn't look very good on a mobile. So you, so you hide them on mobiles and show them on the other devices. Great stuff. We're almost done. Let's get to attributes. It is only for pro versions and custom CSS is only for pro versions. And we'll be doing this in another video so I talk about all the widgets in the pro version. I hope you enjoyed this explanation and demonstration of the heading widget and a little bit about the container widget. If you want to see more about the widgets, follow the videos, follow the playlist, subscribe to the channel and of course hit that like button if you liked it. And if you have questions, comments or you just want to say thank you doctor, drop them in the comments. I always read them, I always reply because I love you guys. Alright, see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.